Thanks, Danielle, and welcome from my side. Uh, we covered a lot of ground from counting sheep to living on Mars. Um, and, and one thing we learned is that the environment shapes our brains. And as Danielle highlighted, digital natives seem to be at ease with their environment. Um, but I want to talk about how, not by nature, but by nurture, do we develop a digital mindset. Um, and previous speakers um, have spoken about the change in environments. And we often talk about how we have a more disruptive environment. Um, and a disruptive environment will require disruptive thinking. So how do I disrupt my thinking? Not just train my brain, uh, but, but truly uh, rewire and disrupt my thinking. So what we observe, and observations alone are not enough, but what we observe is that in the previous world, not just the individual brain, but also the corporate brain, the corporate brain made up of all those brain cells called employees and increasingly connected, how the corporate brain has been uh, wired over the last uh, decades. So there's a focus on reacting to problems, um, to automate, to streamline, to take out uh, non-value adding activities. Uh, we have a strong focus on efficiency um, and we have a strong sense for analytical capabilities. And even today when we look at big data, there's a strong focus on analytical abilities. So we arrived in a world that we call the economy of corporations. Uh, people didn't really matter, they were passive consumers. We understand a lot how the corporate brain works. The fundamental shift that requires new thinking abilities is that we now have a world um, that is focused on people. So for the first time, not corporations, but people are the focal point of attention. And it's a difference between automation, reacting and fixing a problem, to digitization to create something entirely new. This world will be design heavy as opposed to analysis heavy. Um, this world will focus probably more on revenue resilience than cost efficiency. Uh, Kodak was a worldwide admired uh, cost efficient organization, but they were not revenue resilient. So we need to rewire the corporate brain and the individual brain within these corporations to take part in the economy of people. So what I want to do is take you on a bit of a journey with four examples, how a new environment, a digital and highly disruptive environment, requires a new mindset, and that's what we call the digital mind. How second, she observations won't be enough to understand what's going on. We can describe the driverless car, the robot, we can understand what Facebook and LinkedIn can do, but very often we struggle to make sense of our observations. And this is where the role of theory and more abstract thinking patterns can help us to accelerate our thinking and to make sense out of what we see. Digital natives live in a generation that by mandate has to look after their educational well-being. Uh, once you're past um, primary, secondary and tertiary education, um, you tend to spend more time on your, your annual holiday than personal educational well-being. And personal education well-being will be at the core to survive in this new environment. So, for examples, the first one. Um, if you look at this picture and ask yourself what's wrong here. Um, QT study show 32% of all car accidents are caused by digital distraction. 71% of all truck accidents. Default reaction, driving has priority, everything else is a distraction. Digital mind thinks the opposite. The digital mind can't wait to get rid of the car. Um, and so you can see how to rewire my mindset. Um, I grew up in the age before digital capabilities. Uh, so my mindset is driving has got top priority. Digital mindset says, what is so enjoyable about driving? Why would I stay in traffic jam at Coronation Drive? Um, America, American drivers spend on average 101 minutes driving per day. 210 million drivers makes up 5.3 billion hours per year in America alone. You give them the Google driverless car and you unlock the biggest amount of human time we've ever unlocked in mankind. That's the difference between our thinking and you thinking. A um, lot of people who will rewire their brains in the future will sit in cars because this way we've got time. And yes, we might kill a lot of jobs, taxi drivers. We create an endless amount of new jobs for a lot of creative people 
because 5.3 billion hours want to be entertained. Um, so we have to think and disrupt our thinking. Um, and this is just one thinking pattern, um, what I call, that the real world, the physical world, can be highly distracting. This is why our students, not because they don't like our lecture, stay at home um, and follow online our courses. There's no offense, and there's nothing wrong with our, our teaching. It's just that the physical effort of attending a class uh, might be highly um, um, discomforting. Second, um, typical world in the economy of corporations, people go to corporations and consumer service. Uh, in the digital world, we see the exact opposite. And the, in the world that we call the economy of people, corporations come to people. We first see this in the world of, of the medical industry, census, quantified self. Uh, I produce data and I let corporations that I trust take part in my life. Uh, in a few years, probably we will not go to a GP, but trusted GPs will look at our data. Um, look at QET. Um, old world will mean economy of corporations, we build lecture theaters and people come to us, reactive learning. In the new opportunity rich world, more and more you will not know what you don't know. And like in the medical field where you need proactive service provision, we have the same when it comes to learning. Once educational well-being is as important as financial well-being, think superannuation, or physical well-being, think cancer checkup, when educational well-being has got the same importance, we need personalized recommender systems that tell us what we need to know, proactive learning. Uh, and this is where we'll shift the way we, we learn at the moment from reactive to proactive learning. Um, so in this world, uh, we search no longer, but we find. And the, the biggest threat to the Google search engine is the find engine. When you've got 5.3 billion hours available every year, um, you will not be able to search in smart ways because you don't know what you want to search for. Uh, but if increasingly you pr produce big private data, and increasingly we build secure, trusted channels to lace with corporations that we trust, you selectively let organizations take part in your life, you increasingly have an appetite for organizations to help you with your personalized educational well-being, and this is when proactive learning takes place. And again, that's a second example where the corporate brain needs to be rewired because we see something new in the making. Um, this is conscious thinking. So digital native might come across as being at ease with the environment. Uh, that is not necessarily conscious thinking. That just means I'm intuitively fast thinking. Um, what we try to articulate here are long-lasting technology agnostic thinking patterns that hopefully explain how we survive um, and thrive in the years to come. Third example. Um, we can see what happens in front of our eyes. We can see the emergence of 3D printing and robots. Um, and someone said, today we communicate to hundreds of more people than 20 years ago. And we see social media coming up. What we struggle with, again, to make sense. So what do all of these have in common? What do they all have in common? Um, so they, they somehow connect people. Um, they're all digital. They, they created the biggest communities we've ever created in mankind. 1.3 billion here, 800 million there, 500 million here. We never had that sort of community anywhere uh, uh, in the past in mankind. Um, what all these organizations have in common, um, they get better the bigger they are, which is the opposite of how corporations work. Um, so here's a simple graphic. Um, most classical, not digitally minded companies and not digitally minded corporate brains work on the red line, where every consumer more or less gets the same service. Some have got negative network effects, longer queue or traffic jams. All the companies that I showed you are on the exponential curve. And that's the opposite. A digital mind creates an organization that gets better with every new consumer. This is also why digitally minded corporations typically don't have competitors. Most of the companies you just saw have a market share of 50 to 90 percent. There's not another industry that had that sort of market share. 
Once I'm big, I'm beyond competition. Key lesson learned, those companies first create a community and then they create a product. Uh, Strava, a popular cycling app, first creates a big community of cyclists and then worry, what do they want? The not digital mind creates products and services looking for consumers. In an ARC linkage project with a, with a medium-sized bank in Brisbane, we try to take this bank from the red to the blue line. From a bank that hands over a mortgage to a bank that runs the biggest community of homeowners in Queensland. Massive shift in thinking, massive surgery to the corporate brain. And fourth and final item, what you see here are what we call um, idle capacity. So the, the non-digital minded brain looks at what's running, what's working. The airport tries to accelerate boarding, security and check-in. Uh, an airline looks after a passenger and um, how we, we deal with them on a plane. And taxi companies worry about the taxis that are driving. What we have seen now in the sharing economy is that we unlock private idle capacity. Most cars are used 3.5% of their time. In Melbourne and in Sydney today, you don't pay for parking at an airport, as you probably know. You park your car, and when you come back, your car is washed. If they're able to rent out your car in the meantime, you get 25% commission. So the options are park your car and pay 300, or park your car, get it back washed, and earn 300. That's what we call the sharing economy. Um, so the, the, the secret here is we unlock idle capacity. Whether it's 65% of the taxi that doesn't drive, mobile learning, brain training on a plane, or um, Audi and DHL since 1st of May delivering parcels to cars. You go shopping, where do you want your parcel? To my car. And your car will tell DHL where I park, that's the color, number plate, here's a digital key. Uh, end of this year, you can pick up the parcel from the car if you want to return online shopping. Um, so this is about exploring idle capacity, while companies typically are worried about busy capacity. So these were four simple examples that showed you how not just the individual, but also the corporate brain needs to be rewired, um, especially in a highly disruptive environment. Um, thinking latency is the time it takes you to rewire individual or corporate brains. And the longer this takes, the more the digital environment puts your own personal revenue, job security, or your business model under threat. Um, we believe that academics, academic word, and long-lasting theories allow us to make sense out of a highly disruptive environment. And I hope and believe that next to physical and financial well-being, educational well-being becomes a priority. Thank you.